Hi there! Today I'm wondering if I should abandon Atmel Studio or Microchip Studio as it's called now for good. I've been using Atmel Studio since version, version 4 for programming my microcontroller projects on the AVR series, 80 Tinies and 80 Megas. And well, I was most of the time actually happy with the performance of the platform, but recently I have taken some steps into platform IO on Visual Studio Code and I start liking that I can use the same development platform Visual Studio Code to program both my Python code and my C code for the microcontrollers but so far I haven't managed to get everything to work as I wanted to and uh, while it works quite nicely for programming Arduinos and Arduino code, um, those of you who are following this channel know that I, well, don't like the Arduino framework. So on Friday, actually two days ago, a student of mine showed me how he configured Platform IO under Linux and got everything to run uh, as he wanted to, to just program the microcontroller itself and no Arduino uh, stuff around it and to upload the code. Everything from within Visual Studio Code Platform IO. And this is how it's done on Windows. He has done it on Linux, but it should be the same and it should also be the same on MacOS. So here I have Visual Studio Code with Platform IO installed and I'm at Platform IO Home where I can start a new project and I call it the PyoTest M328. Well, it's a P, I can add a P here. And then I have to select a board from the 1049 currently available boards. But I don't want any of these boards. I want the microcontroller itself. And if I write 80 mega 328p here, then I can actually choose between yeah, some boards which still have it listed here, but also just the microcontroller. And I'll do so. I cannot unselect the Arduino framework at this point, so I have to live with it, but we will get rid of it in a second. So I say finish here and Platform IO now has created the folder structure for this project. It's still working and I will wait a second before doing anything here um, because otherwise, yeah, now actually all activities has, have ceased here and I'm presented with the platform io.ini, the initialization file for this project. And as I said, I want to get rid of the Arduino framework here. No, no need for it. No need to blow up my code. So what we can set here is already as a global flag, the processor speed, the speed of my 80 mega. So what I have over here, this is a official ASP USB USB, ASP compatible uh, programmer for 80 megas and 80 tinies following the SPI protocol. There are other protocols which are not supported by this device yet, but the standard ones, the good old uh, ones are fully supported. And I have connected an LED with a resistor to the pin B0 on this little board here. So the, the Controller is running at its internal clock speed of 1 MHz, no quads attached, so this is all you need to run a small project on your 80 megas, just a chip, nothing else. And uh, so we tell it that the board, board build dot f underscore cpu should be 1, yeah, cpu should equal one megahertz. So this is not setting the clock frequency, it's telling the compiler that I'm running at one megahertz of a clock frequency. Everything like this is hidden in Arduino um, in the board settings, like 16 megahertz for the standard Arduino boards. Uno and Nano and all those. Then I have to tell Studio or 
platform io something about the uploader and so i use an upload protocol here which is custom and i have to define upload flags for avr dude who is doing the heavy loading of uploading the code into the microcontroller it's AVR dude on every whichever platform you are, so that, that should be the same, and the flags are also the same. And we have to define the processor core for our um, uploader, which is in this case the, the M328P. And then we tell it that we have as a programmer the C USB ASP. Um, so C is a flag, and USB ASP is the name of the programmer. And we have to tell it to slow down a bit before tells the programmer to go at a clock speed of 187 kilohertz when shifting the data over into the memory of the 80 mega over here. And uh, strangely enough, if you write them in a single row like this, uh, then Platform IO will insert quotation marks around this set of flags, which is then not understood anymore by our AVR dude. So what we have to do is actually not only for readability, but also for functionality to actually separate them into separate lines here. Then we have to tell the platform io what command we are using for uploading and this should be avr dude is our program and then we have the dollar upload flags which we just defined upload underscore flags and we have to tell it what to do and the flag for this is to upload dash capital u and we want to program the flash memory uh, so we write flash colon write colon then dollar source is dollar source is a compiler or a flag within platform io telling uh, what code file with hex code file to upload and we tell um, now happened again we tell platform io or rather avr dude that the file is a hex file intel hex file the i here the last i stands for intel hex all of this is found in the documentation of avr dude um, so that you can easily check up so when i tried this last friday uh, it didn't work, of course. And let me just uh, show you here. Uh, this is the directory where Platform IO has installed a copy of AVR Dude. And uh, this is the original AVR Dude, which is the program to upload code to an 80 mega AV or 80 tiny processor. So if we run AT, no, AVR dude from here with our flex, so I'm only giving now the PM38P for the processor and the CUSBASP and the B4 flag here, and I enter, what it should do is check whether there is a chip on the other side connected to the programmer. And what we get is, well, could not find USB device with a vendor ID of 16C0 and a product ID of 5DC, vendor official DE, product USB ASP. But it is connected to the computer correctly. And we can check this if we use another copy of AVR Dude. And uh, so this here is the directory of my previous uploader, Avia Dudes, uh, which you have seen in previous videos, perhaps. And if I just go here and copy, copy this command here and paste it in here, I cannot obviously even do that. 
correctly today here. Control C, Control V, exact same command, exact not same AVR dude, and it tells me that it sets the SCK frequency to 187.5 Hz and that the AVR device initialized and uh, that it finds something with a uh, signature 1E950F, which is probably an M328P, which is the chip connected on this side here. So the two AVR dudes are not the same. Um, if I just write AVR dude here, this is the version which works, then I get AVR dude version 6.3. If I write AVR dude over here, I get version 6.3. But obviously, the version which follows uh, Platform IO has been compiled without support for this particular program. I have no idea why. So we have to tell Atmel Studio, Atmel Studio, I'm saying, Platform IO which AVR dude to use, and it's the one in program files x86 AVR dudes. So since this path contains spaces, I have to enclose it in a quotation marks program files x86 slash AVR dudes slash AVR dude exe don't think that's necessary. And now it should be using the correct programmer. I'll save this file and now we can write finally some code. And so if we look under source here, then we see that Platform IO has prepared a CPP file for us, main CPP. But I want to stay with a plain C file, so I create a new file, main.c. And I remove the CPP file like this. And we are here in main.c. We have to make our small little standard includes, which is avr slash io.h, containing all the definitions of all the pins of, of the microcontroller, all the internal registers. I will also include from the standard libraries uh, the delay library util delay.h. And now it's time to write a short main here. So int main void like this. We want to make an LED blink which is connected to port B. So I have to define a pin on port B as an output, which I do through the data direction register. And I set a one shifted PB zero bits to the left, which is zero, which I could just write one as well. Then I'll start my infinite loop here, while one run forever. Um, I know that I'm writing code here, don't need this comment. And write that port B should equal one PB zero, that switches on the LED. Then I want to delay, let's say 500 milliseconds or so. Then I want to switch off everything on port B. And I'll wait another 500 milliseconds. So if I didn't do any stupid mistakes here, the code should compile. Let's see, we have the platform IO build symbol down here. If anything I like about the Visual Studio Code is that I have to go to the status line down here to actually find all of this. But well. Then compiling it gives us 178 bytes of code in an hex file which is stored here. We could have a look at hex file, doesn't matter, don't do that now. And we have the upload ability. So let's press upload and see if this time we succeed. And yes, and you see the LED blinking. 
So what what did it do here? Let's go back a bit. Um, it invoked uh, AVR Dude and AVR Dude set the clock frequency for the data transmission to the microcontroller to 187.5 kilohertz. And it is reading the signature of the chip. It sees that it is in um, 328P. And then it erases the chip. It uh, reads the file into its own memory that it's writing the 180 bytes of flash memory and uh, it reads back the same for verifying and it says that everything is okay and uh, yes we have our blinking led so am i satisfied with this uh, success well i have to still see which of the microcontrollers work directly out of the box. If there's anything I can do to uh, adjust for the settings for other 80 tinies or 80 megas, which are not yet perhaps supported by PIO uh, platform IO. But other than that, I, I like it. I, I really like the convenience of the one user interface here. Uh, so thank you for today.